old guy like me, you know, Cloud's going to kill Cisco. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things that were predicted to kill yeah, Cisco. Exactly. And as the, we were saying, the dead are living longer than, you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we see this and, you know, I, it's not a judgment, it's just large cloud providers will do this because there's really a benefit to optimize like on that end. Things, yeah. yeah. Enterprise, it's 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 like instead of you buying a car because you need to drive, it's like I buy a kit and I build the car. Yeah. So there's there's a there's a cost of opportunity. Where do you invest, right? Yeah. It's and if you're trying to figure out how to get faster from A to B. You're rather looking like, what's the infrastructure, what's the road I need, and what car do I need? And not as like, what's the best engine in the car? Hey everyone, David Bumble, back with a very special guest at Cisco Live. Thomas, welcome. Hey, hey David, good to meet you here. Yeah, it's great. I mean, you, you just spoke offline. You, you know someone else who I've interviewed, Hank Preston? Yes, I do, I'm actually. I work with him. Yeah. Uh, joint customers. <laughs> yeah, he's a lot of fun. So tell me, we were talking offline as well, a bit about your background. Um, I'm obviously traditional routing and switching, old man for yeah. a lot of people watching. <laughs> um, there's been big changes, you know, in the data center, traditional routing and switching. Yeah. You said cloud is everywhere now. Cloud so is everywhere. Take us on a journey, you know, in sort of in your experience, what's happened? And like how, you know, tell us a bit about yourself, the journey to cloud and like things I need to worry about. You were, <laughs> uh, number one, when you open up as old man, I was like, I'm feeling like the same, but anyway, <laughs> uh, thanks for the reminder. No, no, uh, 21. 21, there we go. Listen, I, I'm, I'm responsible for the, for the data center network and portfolio in Cisco. Yep. Uh, journey to cloud, I mean, you know, cloud is used a lot as a term. Yeah. Uh, I see it. I see it probably multiple aspects. One is clearly what I see most people saying as cloud as public cloud. Yeah. Uh, and a discussion around what workloads, particularly in the data center space, are going to be run in the cloud versus on prem. And that's quite frankly, there's a lot of interesting transition and reality check what I see over the last couple of years. But the other part of cloud is really more around the operations model, which uh, I think is equally important and interesting, quite frankly, which is actually really impacting, to your point, the people running the networks because. Yeah. What happens there, I think, is really what, what changes uh, how do you operate. And I actually think it's a good thing, quite frankly. Uh, the, the analogy I have, since you mentioned the routing switching, yep. we used to say, hey, if a network runs, don't touch it. Exactly. Uh, bad. <laughs> bad, <laughs> right? I, in my personal opinion, I'm not, I'm not you know, it's, 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 it's really a reflection on, in the past, you configured and never touched it again, which was fine, yeah. right? Whereas now it's really, what you want is you want to readjust, you want to configure, you want to be able to, to have infrastructure as a service kind of, and that really means you want to be comfortable changing. And so this brings us over to a, why people expect that because of cloud, but why what people want to do is operate the infrastructure like they would have access to a cloud. And so, yeah, these are some of the interesting changes I see and where, where cloud fits. So, I mean, there's, Traditional network guy, it's it's quite a change. And I've got to learn Kubernetes, I've got to learn Docker, I've got to learn like security in the cloud. It's it's like crazy amount of stuff to learn. Yeah, at the same time, uh, I, I think you know, uh, every, everybody cooks with water is probably number one. I think the important piece if you if you, had a, you know, I think where your question is going, if you're a networking guy, typical routing switching guy, number one, uh, lessons learned, networking is important, will stay important. What is, it, I, is it important in the cloud? Absolutely. What I have seen over the last three or four years is customers jump putting workers in the cloud, primarily driven or mostly driven by the virtualization teams. Yep. Right? Taking, hey, I have a workload here, I have a VM, just taking lift and shift. Yes. Uh, what happened then, uh, people have more and more workers in the cloud, and all of a sudden it's like, wow, I need to have high availability, I need to have different zones. Uh, I need to be able to get traffic from one zone and the other. Guess what? That's a routing problem. <laughs> yeah. And what we're seeing uh, was, was most of my larger customers on the enterprise side, routing and switching is not going to go away. Routing in particular is not going to go away because it's a very, very important uh, aspect of how do you connect cloud instances between different providers as well as them back to your own uh, estate. So yeah, actually routing is, <laughs> I think, I want to say more important than ever, quite frankly. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because, I mean, I, YouTube, a lot of people, yeah. routing, you know, networking is going away. No, absolutely not. I think networking is part of a service, but it's absolutely not going away. I'm literally, I see more interest in networking, maybe 
not necessarily in the in the way we thought about networking in the past. Oh, it's a router with an interface. It's more oh, now it's a gateway, or depending which cloud provider you're talking about. But it's basically a gateway with an IP interface, and I need to know what's my next hop. Not going away at all, actually. Quite frankly, if you see at, at some of the problem sets that customers struggling with in the cloud as well as in their own data centers around having the ability to understand their network graph, their topologies that spreads much wider than it used to be. And so the first thing you're going to do is it's, it's a logical network, right? It's not the routing and switching, hey, I need to go on a CLI, but it is, I have an IP interface, I have a subnet, I need to know where I go next with my hops. I need to be able to build the graph in software. I need to have digital twin capabilities. That's all networking. <laughs> I mean, so if you were talking to your younger self, yeah. um, a lot of people watching this may be younger yeah. or wanting to transition in. They might not be like old, boring networking guys like me. <laughs> what would you say to you, your younger self if you were starting today or if you were like perhaps a bit older but you were trying to get into this? Like, where do I start? What should I look at? What's important? What are the mistakes? Like, perhaps you can tell some stories. Like, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, give, us, give us sort of a roadmap if you can. I mean, one thing is don't, don't, don't feel like you need to chase the latest thing just to your point. Uh, Kubernetes or yeah. ChatGPT is the latest password everybody yeah, exactly. wants to talk about. The the funny thing is there are important things, but there are some basic principles that will stay and you just apply and it makes your life easier. If I look back, right, uh, the one transition we clearly went through in the networking world is we used to think about devices as the yes. foundation block and they're still out, but we moved on to uh, fabrics and then distributed fabrics and topologies because in the end, it's it's... It's not about it's the device up or down, which is important, but it's really can I get uh, can I provide connectivity from A to B or from you know bet between endpoints, and so there's more of a system thinking how do you operate infrastructure, and I think that if you if I give one advice is like think about that when you're trying to figure out what skills to pick up or where to focus, and so with respect to networking in particular, so there's clearly I think a lot of this is going on for five, ten years since you mentioned Hank, <laughs> yeah. around automation, right? How do I, how am I able to control infrastructures to automatic means to programming, basically, right? And I'm not talking about C++ programming, yeah, like, like Python, right? do. Could be Python, could just be APIs, and then you you start some standard tooling, right? Uh, the trick is really not, in my personal opinion, not, you need to not be an expert programmer. Pick some standard tooling, yeah, so you don't have to create your own. <laughs> and then apply it to a common problem, which is, and the networking is really, how do I get, create connectivity and monitoring that I have linked between endpoints, right? And so this is where automation fits in, this is where Python SDKs might fit in, where maybe you have Ansible for automation, maybe you are coming from the cloud mindset as a younger person and you start with uh, a Terraform approach. But it's basically how do you automate infrastructure? Uh, and then the next one, this is a little DAM. No, no, keep comes going, keep going. Is, well, this is pushing configuration, but you want to actually have a model, which is where some of the mathematics comes, right? When you talk about some of these networks, you know, no, no, no surprises. You know, the neural network is like is a network. If you look at us, the picture is very much like a network graph. Exactly. Yeah. And so some of the things that that are relevant there absolutely apply to networking, which is actually to me fascinating because when and I'm dating myself a little bit when when I did my degrees, it was about neural networks, <laughs> and so here we are, 25 years later. And he was like, wow, uh, it's the latest. No, it's actually was there. She's bringing this together, how this applies to networking, which is actually very much similar. It's just exciting. Yeah. And so I think my main message, networking is very, very important because in the end it connects. The famous word is the, the network is the computer. Yeah. <laughs> right? These words I would say the network is the cloud because it's literally what it is. So it is the core. <laughs> but there are a lot of things you can apply around automation modeling, that's crucial because what you want as a user of an infrastructure, you want to be able to predict outcome. And modeling is very important, observability is very important, being able to connect the dots, which is the network, is very important. So I actually think it's an exciting space. If you're a networking person, you're going to be the center no matter what you're going to do. <laughs> AI, is it going to change everything? Uh, it <laughs> like in the cloud, is it like... Is it something I should study? Is it something I should get into? I, I Is it change the way I do my work? I, my, my recommendation is study what you can do with AI technology. Don't over-rotate everything is in the cloud because 
the way why CI is very important with respect to networking uh, is you can use those mechanisms to predict better behavior, how networks will operate if you do apply a change to network. You can do this before you actually apply a change. This is like the digital twin, twin concept. Yeah. Uh, very, very important. Can I use AI for prediction of network failure, right? Let's see there's this idea around. I have optical interconnects. Can I look at the performance characteristic and then do AI modeling in the back end based on some data sets and saying, hey, I can now predict this link may go down based on historic trend within the next three days. That's cool stuff. So in that sense, yes, you should study that and think through how you can use the power of that to make networks more reliable if you're in the network world as an operator. So absolutely, yes. Uh, I think that's very important. The other piece I think where it's important is um, there, there are certain application that will drive how networks should be built, which yep. is a completely different angle. Yeah, I'm glad right? you said that, yeah. <laughs> because I'm right now, we talked about AI, also how to use it as a tool to automate and monitor networks better. But there's also another work angle on, on AI, which is around, if I have to build big uh, AI clusters, is the network the same that we used to build in the past? Or is there different characteristics I need in the network? And so that's, quite frankly, actually a very interesting topic to think through. How to optimize my architecture, what are some of the capabilities I need to build in to a network to optimize for ML workloads attached to that network. Security? Security is one important piece. It's a big problem, eh? <laughs> Security, I don't think is any new. It's just no. what happens is, as most people say, the data center is distributed, which means security becomes a distributed problem, which means it's a little more complex. So you need to actually build in security into what you do. Instead of what we used to in the past, security sits on the border. Yeah. <laughs> because there's no more border, it's just distributed, so it has to be built in. But security itself is nothing new, it's just it needs to be part of the design by default. So certification-wise, let's say I'm starting out. Yeah. CCNA is still a good choice to start with? CCNA is a good idea. And then perhaps a DevNet associate? Absolutely, you should do that. And then perhaps AWS started. I think so you should look at one or two of these clouds, whether it's AWS, whether it's Azure, whether it's OCI or so Google. It doesn't matter. Just like choose something to get the foundation. <laughs> think one of those. They, they, what's important to learn is, is how cloud providers think about it, right? Uh, because there's a different way how do you center about a mindset. If you're coming from the cloud side, and I made that comment earlier, right? You more think from the endpoint side. Yeah. I have a workload on an endpoint and I need to connect endpoints together and the network is just the means. That's the mindset. Or sometimes the terms people are using is there's a provider and a consumer and I need to find the relationship how to yeah. get from A to B. If you're coming from the networking side, you typically think about I have segments and I put endpoints into segment and by being a member of a segment, I know they can talk. So it's a, it's a different way how to look at this problem. So it's, I think, a very, very helpful thing having the network architecture view to think about how do you segment infrastructure at the same time, and that's why it doesn't really matter which cloud you're going to start with, because they're pretty much very similar how they think about the outside in view, which is endpoints and how they need to communicate. I was hearing in some of the the, 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 the keynotes um, this discussion about how Cisco are like in between like customers who have their stuff on premise. Yeah. Plus, you're not like dedicated to one cloud provider because like old guy like me, you know, Cloud's going to kill Cisco. <laughs> There's a lot of things that were predicted to kill yeah, Cisco, exactly. and as the we were saying, the dead are living longer than you know. Yeah, predicted. Exactly. <laughs> yes. No, it's not going to happen. Uh, but we thought like networking, cloud is just networking was going to go down. A lot of people were predicting, like you said, it never happened. A, I mean, a, n n there's you know the whole cloud is a network, as I said, right? Yep. The network is the cloud. Uh, so that's not going to change. And I think the other piece, what you're saying, is how much do customers operate their own data centers versus moving the cloud? And I think that's quite yeah. frankly. Is a, there's going to be a healthy balance because in the end, it's a business problem, right? There's yeah. a cost to anything. What a lot of people figured out is there is gravity to data. It's not easy to move it around. Pure from an amount of data you need to move as well as from the cost of moving data and then some of the uh, regulatory compliance restriction where you can put your data, right? And so because of that, uh, I think every customer I'm talking to is ending up in a hybrid world, okay. right? They will have some data sets in their own four walls or rented four walls, but dedicated, and then they will have some of their data set and application uh, running in cloud infrastructure where they're really going after service. Uh, and I don't think that's a right or wrong. As a lot of this is really, it's, it's in the end, it's a business decision between what's my total cost of ownership, how fast can I get a service rollout and application going, uh, and how do I scale up, right? And so, you know, I see, I see some customer went all the way to saying, hey, I want to drive a change, I lift and shift which allows me to redo. 
going the other way at this point and saying, wow, the cost is pretty high. And so now I can maybe see, hey, the front end, I might want to run in a cloud because I need the auto scale capability. My back end, I might not want to put it because it's too expensive because the data is just too expensive to be there. And so I think a lot of times you see these cycles, but it's going to be a business decision over time, what is the cost, and then you got to make adjustments. And you also, you do the data centers piece as well. How are things changing in the data centers? Like, is it, just, again, like people are moving more and more to the cloud or uh, any more trends you're seeing in the data center? In the, the data clouds? center, what I'm seeing, everybody has uh, connectivity into the cloud. Yeah, Everybody keeps building out data centers. What I do see a lot of standardization around how do you build fabrics in a data center, very much focus on spine leaf designs, scale out designs, very much focus in the last year and it will just get even more and more around what's not just the cost and the operational complexity of managing infrastructure, also what is the power aspect of my infrastructure yeah. and how do I get to better manage my my uh, footprint, power footprint, carbon footprint of infrastructure. I think that's more and more driving uh, decisions. And then the other piece, what I see in particular on the networking side, I see more standardization around tooling. How do you automate? Right. It used to be I have a tool for networking, I have a separate tool for uh, server and storage. More and more focus around uh, consistent tooling across, and this is where some of the tools I mentioned earlier come in, right? Instead of having bespoke tools for a certain technology, more focus on abstraction uh, and common tooling across, because in the end you want a common service delivered, and you don't want to go through the hassle of integrating different tools for different components that deliver that service. So from a management like visibility point of view, like you, are we not talking about Ansible? Are we talking about like something that Cisco can help with visibility or? A, it both. It's a both. combination of both, right? There's clearly uh, a large interest in um, uh, open source capabilities yeah. and, and then being able to have this as a, as a managed or maintained distribution by a provider or vendor, uh, Ansible is in a bucket. But then also there's clearly what you need as a counterpart to this, you need supported APIs and playbooks uh, to support that capability. So it's it's going to be an, it's an interesting shift I see happening in that ecosystem uh, where, there's, where there's more uh, collaboration, I think, between uh, uh, different players to make that happen. So CCNA, DevNet, Associate Preps, AWS, Basic Cert, and then go down what would you suggest after that? Pick a project, uh, what you want to automate, or where we want to provide visibility. And you know, it can start either way, it depends on where the pain point is in a company. What I see a lot for most is first go after the visibility. Yeah. Trying to figure out where stuff where stuff is, where is it broken, where they have hotspots, and then derive the action from there. But yeah, I think that's that's the path to go. Um, and then, yeah, eventually come back to things to what are the architecture requirement for the next set of applications going forward. What do you see? Where do you see things going? You've you've kind of spoken a bit about that, but can you give us like a quick like overview? Where do you see things going this year and in the, the next few years? Um, more cloud, uh, more bandwidth. More bandwidth is <laughs> that reminds me when I started off. I remember <laughs> it's like everything was ten one hundred. And it was the first one saying, oh, we can do gigabit. And I was like, who needs this? Yeah. <laughs> I asked three years ago, actually the last three and a half years ago, last last live session of Cisco Live, everybody interested in 400 gig. And I looked people, I had people looking and was like, Thomas, what are you smoking? Yeah. Every large uh, RFP I have from, from either enterprise service boys, 400 gig is must at this point. So it's, it's a given customers deploying it, or selling clearly. Uh, we start talking about 800 gig. I was going to say, when 800 gig coming, or uh, we we started shipping the first capable infrastructure that is 800 capable. Uh, I see it phasing in in the in the core of infrastructure probably in the next 24 months. Absolutely, it will come. Uh, yeah, so that that cycle of bandwidth is going to continue. Uh, what I think is slightly different is is I'm more focused on the power aspect than yeah. it used to be. Yeah. Because bandwidth everybody wants, but you're going to run out of how many kilowatts you have in a rack <laughs> and how many kilowatts you have in the location and what the cost is of that power. So I think there's way more focus on not just the bandwidth, which I think will keep going, but on what's the power envelope that I need to deliver that bandwidth. But that is clearly going. The other piece, I mean, I, literally, I, mean, I don't think this is specifically new as Lily is the automation uh, transition is going on to standardize automation. Uh, it's clearly going on that you have to have 
an operational architecture approach to support hybrid, as in your own managed infrastructure as well as cloud properties, and bring this together. And then the other one I truly believe is a big is a big play in 23 and going forward is the digital twin capabilities uh, to be able to model any change you do on your network, so you know the outcome before you actually click the button. Okay. And how would I do that? Is it is Cisco got a tool? Or? We, we have a good set of tools. We have a lot of partners we're working with. But yes, I mean, really what you want is to build a network graph and then overlay events that happen. So in the, in the, in the area I'm working on, we have a Nexus dashboard. And then we're working on a cloud-delivered service, which is Nexus Cloud. But yes, there are, there are products that we sell and then there are additions that you, that you can have from, from our partners as well. Do you think the, um, the days of having a whole bunch of physical infrastructure is moving more to like putting everything virtualized, like virtual routers, virtual everything? I mean, that to me is a, it's a different layer of discussion. There's more like, where do you optimize? Yeah. For a while, there was this discussion, hey, disaggregation, uh, can I optimize the box from the software on top? Uh, we see this, and you know, it's not a judgment. It's just large cloud providers will do this because there's really a benefit to optimize like on that end. Things, yeah. yeah, enterprise. It's 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 like instead of you buying a car because you need to drive, it's like I buy a kit and I build the car. Yeah. So there's there's a there's a cost of opportunity. Where do you invest, right? Yeah. It's and if you're trying to figure out how to get faster from A to B. You're rather looking like, what's the infrastructure, what's the road I need, and what car do I need? And not as like, what's the best engine in the car? Yeah. And so I think that one I, I, I don't see really for traditional enterprise environments is really, that's more of a discussion in the, in the large cloud provider space. I'm, I'm glad you said that because like there was this whole drive for white boxing oh. or open flow yeah. and all of that, but that's kind of like died. Except in the, like you said, in the cloud, it seems... It, it is relevant, but it is relevant it when you build provided. infrastructure. It's really not as a consumer of an IT infrastructure enterprise because that's not really the outcome you're shooting for, right? The outcome you're shooting for is literally how do I connect from A to B and how do I segment securely and how do I have visibility? It's, it's not how do I get the last 1% of performance out of it, so... Thomas, we, we're out of time. Sorry about that. I, I want to keep you here for hours. <laughs> I really appreciate you sharing. Yeah, no. And thanks for, you know, giving, especially people who knew a roadmap. Yeah. No. Thanks, Thank David. You. I really enjoyed it. So yeah, hope, Brilliant. Thanks. hope to talk again. Yeah, definitely. Cheers. Thanks. Yeah.